Welcome everyone, I'm Alexandra Karakas, I'm a PhD student from Budapest, Hungary and the title of my talk today is The Notion of Universality in László Mohoinai uh, work and this is sort of true. By universality I mean a hybrid artistic and philosophical notion that's based on Moholinoid's implicit and explicit statements about his own practice. Talking about Moholinoid is a tricky thing because there are thousands of publications, books and articles about the work of László Moholinoid in many different languages. He had many solo and group shows only in 2020, there was one in Canada, in Chicago, Germany, Turkey and in Italy as well. And I feel like it's almost impossible to go through everything about him. I even had a chance to have a look at unpublished Moholy materials, for instance, original photos and correspondence between him and the avant-garde Hungarian artist. And for this, I want to, I want to say thank you to Kristina Pasut and the library at Moholina University of Art and Design, especially Clara Levai and Julia Bartkai. When I was going through these materials at the library, several questions came to my mind. What can be still said about Moholinoid 74 years after his death and after a vast amount of publications? What was his secret? How is it possible that he is still relevant and that his work still fit the contemporary issues in fine art and design as well? And how did he manage to be successful in almost every genre of both fine art and design? And in my talk today, I examine Moholy Noid's work on an abstract level through the four major categories of fine art, design, theoretical work and institutional efforts. I, I examine what I call a bricolage approach to, to his work. And by bricolage, I refer to an attitude to use, reformulate and redesign already existing materials and ideas and thoughts to create new concepts in, in design and art. Moholina Moholin consciously experimented with different categories in his professional practice as he was active in uh, photography, painting, graphic design, industrial design, theater design, filmmaking and writing as well. And in all his work, he was continually looking for new methods as well as new combinations of already existing things. This is more like a synthesis rather than replicating artworks in already existing styles. In my talk, I examine this bricolage phenomenon, this DIY spirit uh, through instances from each of the four major categories like fine art, design, theoretical work and institutional efforts. László Mohoinai, born in 1895 in Bácsborsod, a rural tiny village in Hungary on the Great Plain. And this village was so small that it only had two streets back then and still nowadays there are only 1,200 people um, who live there still. His father, Lipot Weiss, left the family when Moholy Noid was still very young and later on his uncle Gustav Noid supported the family. It was because of him that Moholy changed his, his, his name from Weiss to Noid and then to Moholy Noid as, as the family moved to the town name, named uh, Mohol. Later, Moholy Noid attended a secondary school in Szeged where drawing was not offered um, at that time, although he did study some art history, which is um, surprising considering the fact that it was only the very beginning of the 20th century. And um, Lloyd, Lloyd C. Engelbrecht made a huge comprehensive two-volume book about Mogoli Noid and his life. And in this book, he emphasized that it's more than likely that these lectures had a huge impact on Moholy. And uh, this is part of the reason why he was interested in art history from, from an early age. In a correspondence between, in a correspondence, Moholy wrote that in this, in this period, he spent all his money on art books and that he was constantly studying illustrations and art history. He studied the old master, the new ones, basically uh, pretty much 
uh, anything he could get his hands on uh, during that time. Around this time, Mowali also, also started to publish his poems in Hungarian journals and later he moved to Budapest and started to study law at the university. Um, this happened probably because of, of his uncle Gustav's influence on him because he was, he was a lawyer as well. And it's a funny story that he also applied to the Hungarian Royal National School of Arts and Crafts, which institution, institution since 2006 is named for him as Mohonina University of Art and Design. There is a copy in his daughter's Hattula Moholinard's uh, archive of his application to an evening course at the Arts and Crafts University, but um, as long as I know, there is no evidence that he actually attended the school, but he, he, definitely, he definitely applied to an evening course there. In his second year at the university, Moli had to join the army when World War I had broken out in 1914. Um, during these years, he served in the army, um, but he also continued to work on his poems and writings, and he also began to draw. And these works, these, these drawings, um, were, were mainly smaller drawings on different uh, papers and postcards uh, that were given to him for free in, in the army during that time. A large number of Mogolese postcards and battlefront drawings are published uh, actually and these crayon and pencil drawings are the first reflections of the universal uh, do-it-yourself spirit, uh, in my opinion, that Mogoli maintained all through his career. Because these spontaneous sketches made on fun materials represented the avant-garde spirit of that time, even though Mogolinoid was, prob was probably not aware of this. Um, and at the same time, uh, this was the first occasion in his practice that he had to invent new creative methods in order to overcome the absence of actual tools to make art, like uh, paper or, or um, painting. He was wounded in 1917 and his own drawing of the accident was on a postcard uh, as well that he sent back home and this titled Self-Portrait in a Hospital Bed. After returning from the war, Mughali started to establish consciously his artistic career both in writing and, um, and painting as well. This period laid down the basis of Mughali's ideas about art and design and the relation between society and, uh, and, and culture, his opinion um, the about the relation between society and culture. After a brief stay in Vienna, he moved to Berlin, where he became an established artist on his own. And he had um, solo and group shows, and also he continued publishing his writing. And slowly but steadily, he became part of the avant-garde art scene in Berlin. Because Berlin was, and actually still is, one of the centers of fine art and design and science as well. And Mogoli work, worked through a wide range of uh, cultural activities and he was involved in many different cultural um, organizations. Although being skeptical in the beginning about Dadaism, for, for instance, later on he definitely picked up some of, some of their ideas about, about art. Of course, Mowali was not part of, of the Dada movement, but the aim of incorporating unusual elements into fine art or the aim of destroying or, or at least uh, blurring the boundaries between art and design are evident in Mowali's works um, as well. Especially after he visited the first Dada fair in 1920, he changed his mind about, um, about the movement and what uh, and, and, and its meaning and um, also he described that Dada is something like an emotional pandemonium with the atmosphere of fury and ridicule direct, directed against uh, World War I. In Berlin, Mowali also became interested in film, photography and theater design as well and the absence of artistic tools was also evident in, in Berlin 
because he had to move there. Um, in the beginning, he did not have a studio, for instance, uh, so he needed to invent new ways to be able to continue his artistic practice. Um, and the time spent in Berlin laid down um, the groundwork of Moholy's Bauhaus invitation as well to personal connections and also um, professional practice. And at that point, Moholy started to uh, avoid traditional categories in, in art. And I feel like this was the, the period that was really crucial in developing his do-it-yourself uh, bricolage style. And so now I will turn to my to to my more theoretical interpretation of Moholy's institutional and artistic works. So um, basically my argument is that uh, Moholy's bricolage approach is based on three uh, claims. Um, the first is about his academic training or the lack of his academic training. And the second is his theoretical interest that was um, just evident from, from the beginning of his career. And the third is the way he applied his philosophical idea into his educational and practical works. Okay, so my first claim is that he had no traditional training in the arts. Um, as I mentioned, he applied to an evening course at the Hungarian, Ro Hungarian Royal National School of Arts and Crafts, but there's no evidence of him actually attending any lecture there. He studied law, but that didn't help him either in order to be a successful artist. And although he knew many people of the Hungarian uh, avant-garde scene in Berlin, he had to start pretty much from the beginning everything to build his career and, and also his personal image, image as, an, as an artist. Berlin is also where Walter Gropius, head of the Bauhaus in Weimar, heard about Moly and eventually invited him as the head of the Metal Workshop and as a teacher of the so-called foundation course in 1923. Around this time, Moholy became interested in photography, partly because of his first wife, Lucia Moholy, now he was a photographer as well. The Bauhaus years will not be discussed today because it seems to me that the, that period is the most widely discussed um, period uh, of Moholy. But what's relevant from my talk uh, is that during the Bauhaus years, Moholy developed his artistic approach as well. Oliver Potter, a researcher from Canada, argues that Moholy was one of the first artists who integrated scientific uh, thinking into art. Especially photography in the 19th century was used both in scientific context and as a medium of artistic expression, but there was a sharp distinction between these two types of uh, application of, of uh, photography as a tool. In science, the purpose of uh, photography was to document and uh, things and to bring closer entities that scientists would not be able to see or analyze uh, without a camera and without um, photo. Um, observation, because observation being a primary source of scientific knowledge, indeed, and Botor argues that Moholy wanted to, re to teach people to see and to see more and to see differently uh, the same things that we maybe overlook on a daily basis. And to do this, he incorporated scientific imaging equipment and methods into art photography, and this led to uh, aestheticization of scientific uh, photography or the scientization of artistic photography. He also believed that inventions in art and design are in causal relation with social change. These themes were evident in Moholy's first book, painting photography, titled Painting, Photography, Film, and later on his more famous work, New Vision. These two books already contain many references uh, to broaden the tools of photo making and Moholy was interested in not just regular cameras, but telescopes, uh, microscopes, x-ray film, and eventually cameraless creation of uh, photo. Um, these experiments eventually led him to invent the famous photograms. 
Photograms are basically cameraless pictures. They were made on a photosensitive paper with very long exposure times and a bright source of light. After exposure, uh, the process of development was simpler than with normal photos and because uh, photograms were just fixed and washed and that's all. According to Lucia Mowali's writings, uh, first they used daylight paper that allowed him to investigate every phase of the picture making and the principle behind photograms was at least partially scientific as Mowali compared the process of making photograms to scientific to, to scientists studying zoological and mineral forms. So he was looking for analogies between uh, science and, um, and art making. In fact, probably the earliest publication about cameraless photos was, was um, written by the scientist Paul Lindner, a microbiologist whose aim was to record and observe natural entities, mainly, mainly plants. The exact relation between Laszlo and Lucia Moholy, uh, Paul Linner and other artists and scientists who use photograms at the time is still unclear. Um, the, um, the, um, the resources are controversial in this regard, but there are definitely earlier forms of photograms and for instance Man Ray and William Henry Fox Talbo also developed similar uh, processes in photography, but um, nonetheless Mowali claimed uh, originality for the term photogram. In this case, combining scientific thinking and tools into fine art exposes Mowali's artistic approach. Because from the beginning, um, when I was re researching about Mowali Noy, I've I felt like he has this unique bricolage spirit, both his personality and his career reflects a self-reflective and also meaning-seeking attitude towards life. So what is this bricolage thing, um, finally? So Claude Lévi-Strauss presented the concept of bricolage as a method of structuring mythical thought, meaning and meaning the new combination of pre-existing mythological elements in order to create something new. But uh, bricolage means more than a way of tinkering myths, um, because bricolage refers to an attitude, uh, a skill and an approach to use, reformulate and redesign already existing things, um, materials, ideas, uh, concepts and thought in order to create um, something never seen before. There is an early essay by Mohali Nagy uh, titled From Segmental Man to Total Man in which he argues uh, against specialists and claims that we need total humans. In the, for in the foreword of Vision and Motion, his book, he also claimed that, um, that's a quotation, Without the balanced performance of intellect and feeling, man becomes crippled, one-sided. Only the combination fosters growth and leads to an assurance of judgment, security of existence. The same argument appears in many different writings by him, for instance, um, in an essay from 1947 titled Analyzing the Situation. And in this, he says, quotation, with growing industrial opportunities, the entire educational system attained a vocational aspect. Schools lost sight of their best potential quality, universality. They lost their sense of synthesis to the extent of a complete separation of various types of ex experience. Quotations. And in Vision and Motion, he argues that specialization, mainly in art and design, uh, is just against creativity. Setting the boundaries between different genres, genres of art eliminates the wholeness of the process of creating an object. And also he claimed that specialists are working in a maze and this just makes them inanimate and uh, blocks their creativity. Many different essays show Mowali's intent of aiming at universality in art and design as well in his life. He integrated this notion of universality into his educational work too. 
his book, The New Vision, focused more on educational methods of the Bauhaus in Germany, while Vision in Motion is different in terms of scope and uh, topics, it, because it focuses more on the Chicago Bauhaus and the relation between art and life in general and his philosophical notions, so it gives a better understanding about Mohali's approach towards the arts. He believed that inventions in art and design are in closer relation with social change and that new techniques were a way of social development both on a personal level and also in greater uh, social systems. In Chicago, Mohali Nagy wanted to create the opposite of vocational education in order to avoid the breeding of specialists with a narrow vision about design. He wanted to force the synthesizing ability of his students. Um, in the Institute of Design Chicago, they were offering trainings for artists, industrial designers, architects, photographers, and teachers as well. And the framework somehow uh, was based on the previous uh, German Bauhaus system, but um, certain modifications were made to fit the American circumstances as well, and especially the circumstances in Chicago, where they wanted to improve the quality of industrial design. The framework somehow was based on the previous German Bauhaus, but uh, certain modifications were made to fit the American circumstances as well, and especially the circumstances in Chicago, where they wanted to improve the quality of industrial design since the, de since the development of the new Bauhaus. The basic idea behind the Institute of Design was to train students with a universal approach, towards design and art and to support what I would call now a bricolage or do-it-yourself knowing or a universal approach towards life and the arts. They also offered some vocational training, mainly technological training, but um, the purpose of that was to provide sufficient knowledge about new technical uh, inventions. The first year basic course offered the backbone of the educational program, but students um, had lectures about every aspect of art and design in order to give them a universal approach towards art. Summary, Mohali expressed his ideas about universality in every possible aspect. In his essays and writings, he frequently discuss how important it is to be open-minded to different disciplines and he also promoted the same ideas when, when um, he worked at the Bauhaus and later developed the educational program in Chicago at the New Bauhaus and later the Chicago School of Design and the Institute of Design. In his practical work, he experimented with implementing scientific ideas into fine art and he tried, to, he tried out uh, pretty much every genre in art and design, let it be movie making, theater design, industrial design or drawing. And this avant-garde spirit helped him to be one of the greatest Hungarian artists.